Hello, Algebra 2 students. So today we are going to focus on factoring fourth degree polynomials. Okay. Um, most for the most part, they're going to be specifically trinomials. And again, we're going to factor using the same rules that we have used before. So the and I would highly suggest you take a few notes in your notebook. Um, I've got five examples we're going to go through here in this set of notes. So the first problem, <clears throat> excuse me, is x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 36. So when we're looking at these, um, since we have a league coefficient of a 1 out here, um, we're looking for two numbers that are two factors that multiply to give me negative 36 and add to give me 5. Okay, so if I just talk for a moment while you think. So again, I'm multiplying to give me negative 36 and add to give me 5. Hopefully you're thinking of 9 and negative 4. Now in the past, we would have like x plus 9 and x minus 4. But since it's a fourth degree and I have to get a middle term of an x squared, these are each going to be x squared because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth which is my lead term here. And like um, x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x squared. And 9 times x squared is a 9x squared. These two combine to give you that 5x squared in the middle. Okay, so before we say, okay, we're done factoring, we got to look. Okay, the only way you could keep going is if one of your factors is like the difference of two squares. This first one is not because it's a sum. So it's going to be x squared plus 9. The second one is a difference, and these are both perfect squares. 4 is a perfect square, so is 1. So this is going to factor into, hopefully you remember, x minus 2 and x plus 2. So again, this is the fourth degree trinomial um, factored completely and that's going to be our directions for today. We want to factor each um, fourth degree trinomial completely. So it's using the same rules we have before we just might have to take it an extra step or two at the end. So in the second example I have, I have uh, x to the fourth minus 7x squared minus 8. So in this example I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 8 and add to give me negative 7. So again, I want to multiply to get negative 8 and add to get negative 7. Hopefully you're thinking um, a positive, not a positive, sorry, a negative 8 and a positive 1. So again, this is going to be x squared minus 8 and x squared plus 1 because again, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. And that's going to give me a positive x squared and a negative 8x squared, which give me the negative 7x squared in the middle there. Okay, now before we say we are done, okay, can you factor either one further? Like, is either one um, the difference of two squares? This first one has is a difference, because it's got a minus sign in there. But 8 is not a perfect square, so that can't factor anymore. This one is a sum, because there's a plus sign there. So again, this is it factored completely. So sometimes there's not an extra step to take at the end. It just depends on your problem. Okay, my third example. We have 8x minus 6x cubed plus x to the fifth. So what I would do first is put these in order. So if I'm looking at highest degree to lowest degree, the highest degree would be x to the fifth. Um, the next degree would be the x cubed, and then we would have the 8x at the end, because that would be a first degree. Okay, so now on this one, i got to think, you know, I probably should have mentioned it in the other ones, but is there anything I can factor out of all three terms? Hopefully, on this one, you're going to say, oh, you can factor an x. So I'm left with x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 8. Okay, and now it's just like a problem we were doing before. So on this one, I'm looking for what multiplies to give me 8 and adds to give me negative 6. If I pause for a moment, let you think. So again, what multiplies to give me 8 and adds to give me negative 6. Hopefully you're thinking that is a um, negative 4 and a negative 2. 
So this is going to factor into x times x squared minus 4 times x squared minus 2. So before we say, hey, that's my final answer, we need to stop and think, huh, can I factor each factor more? So if I look at um, the second one here, x squared minus 4, it's a difference, and again, they're perfect squares. So this is going to factor into x minus 2, x plus 2, and then the last one, it is a difference, but 2 is not a perfect square. So this is going to stay the way it is. So my final answer here is going to be x times the quantity x minus 2 times the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x squared minus 2. So sometimes they factor a little bit more. Okay, on the next one, we have 11x squared minus x to the fourth minus 18. So again, just like the previous problem, the first thing I would do would be to arrange them in order. So I'm going to start with the highest degree. So I'm going to have negative x to the fourth, and then I'm going to have the 11x squared, and then the minus 18. So on this one, notice we have a lead coefficient of a negative or negative 1 out there. So if that is the case, I highly recommend you factor that out first. So if I factor out a negative or a negative 1, I'm left with x to the 4th minus 11x squared and then plus 18. Okay, so now I'm going to keep factoring this. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me, what is it, 18 and add to give me negative 11. So if I pause for a moment while you're thinking, again, I want two numbers that multiply to give me 18 and add to give me negative 11. Um, I'm thinking negative 9 and negative 2. So this is going to be x squared minus 9 and x squared minus 2. So again, before I think, is this my final answer? Um, are either one of them difference of two squares? Because if so, they can be factored more. In this first one here, or the second part, I guess I should say, it is a difference, and um, 9 is a perfect square. So this can be factored more. So I have the negative 1 out in front. This is going to factor into x minus 3 times x plus 3. And the last factor, it is a difference, but 2 is not a perfect square. So it's going to be x squared minus 2. So again... That is my final answer. I factored it completely. Okay, let's do one more example here. So we have negative 2t to the 6 plus 2t squared. Now notice this is in order, highest degree to lowest. But I can factor something out of both. I'm going to factor out a negative 2 and then also a t squared. So I'm left with t to the 4th minus... One. I'm going to put a 1 there to hold its spot. Okay, so notice um, the second one here is the difference, and both of them are perfect squares. So again, we've got the negative 2t squared out in front. This is going to factor into t squared minus 1 and then t squared plus 1. And again, before I say, hey, that's my final answer, this can be factored more as well. You know, the second term here, t squared minus 1, is still the difference of two squares. So if I factored it more, I still have negative 2t squared out in front. Um, the t squared minus 1 is going to factor into t minus 1, t plus 1. And then the last one, this is not a difference of two squares, it's the sum. So that one can't be factored more. It's just t squared plus 1. So this is factored completely. So some problems, like you've hopefully noticed by now, um, are shorter than others. Some factor quickly and you're finished. Some take a few more steps. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Today you have a Delta Math assignment. And if you noticed before, there are videos in there, help videos you can watch um, to get some guidance as well. Take care.